Mm, pretty cute little. Hello and welcome to the Bush Gardens Experience Part 11. And here, as you can see, I am petting Baloo, the gray kangaroo. She's one of the older kangaroos here at Kangaloom. And this is LT, which is the youngest kangaroo here at Kangaloom. He was born just about a couple of months ago and still enjoys relaxing in a pouch. Especially when the pouch is held by Ali, who is the girl holding him right here. And he's especially enjoying the scratches she's giving him. And if you're wondering, his name LT stands for... Lawrence Taylor? Yes. Lawrence Taylor. With these Yes, he is named after a very famous football player. And of course, he's getting all the girls. Yeah, not even a year old and the girls are already all over you. You are one lucky little Joey, aren't you? <laughs> Jealous of all the attention. <laughs> Look, you're on camera. Now you're gonna be a star. You're gonna be a star. No Look at that cute little boy. Well, not really a football star, but something that your ancestors have been following since the dawn of time. A champion kickboxer. When playing or fighting among themselves, kangaroos may stand up and spar. But their normal defense is to deliver a powerful kick. Though fights don't really last very long, and they usually end abruptly. Well, it looks like that kangaroo got into a terrible fight. Oh wait, no, that's just Rufus. He already had a half-tail. The end of it got infected when he was younger, so it had to be removed. Besides the small quarrels here and there, the kangaroo community is pretty much peaceful here at Bush Gardens, including the little wobble -albies. Though this is not really our zoo area of the day, we were just stopping by to say hello to the kangaroos. Our zoo area of the day is actually... The Bird Gardens. Now the Bird Gardens pretty much occupy the entire southwest corner of the park. It is home to many species of exotic birds like macaws, lorikeets, and a huge flock of flamingos. It is also home to the kangaroos and other marsupials that we were just hanging out with about 20 seconds ago. In this particular area, zoo campers like Allie and me get the privilege to feed and perch the scarlet macaws in the tree that's just across from the excursion's gift shop. There you go, perfect. It's a great way to get an even closer look at one of the most beautiful species of parrot in the world. And now you're going next. <laughs> you don't want to put it up to him, tell him step up. Step up. Step up. Step up. All right. Scarlet macaws are surprisingly very light for their size, only coming up to about two and one quarter pounds, which is exactly one kilogram. And if you're wondering, the treats that we're giving them are almonds. The macaws love to crack them open with their extremely strong beaks. Perfect! Yay! Yay! Well, now that both macaws are safely perched in their tree, it is now time once again to head to that aviary known as the Kookaburr's Nest. Among the splendid starlings and the hammer cops, there is one bird at this aviary that stands out more than the rest, the masked lapwing. Now these birds have a very distinctive call, and it sounds like this. It sounds like a really amplified cricket chirp. Though the stiff tail and the scoby ducks don't really seem to mind the noise at all. They're too busy enjoying their bird seed along with all the other species of birds that are here, like the scarlet ibis enjoying their fish breakfast, including the solitary sun bittern, which forages for its food by stabbing its beak to the gravel for small scraps here and there. But this is not the only flock of birds being fed. Just check out this huge group of Caribbean flamingos. Since flamingos are filter feeders, they get a special flamingo soup every morning. And every morning, they crowd around this special feed pool that has the mix within it. To them, it is absolutely irresistible. Almost as irresistible as a lorikeet to a cup of nectar. A lorikeet to a cup of nectar. Sounds pretty good. See, 
see, I told you it would be pretty good. But yes, here we are back at Lori Landing once again, feeding the beautiful rainbow lorikeets juicy cups of nectar. And of course there's always one on my head. One that would rather just chew on my hat instead of having any nectar and then just bite me when I try to offer him some. Ow. Ow. But besides that one, most of the lorikeets here are actually very friendly, spunky little creatures that really have no sense of personal space whatsoever. But who really cares? I mean, that's why we're here in the first place, right? I mean, it's nothing like having like 20 birds on you at the same time like Amanda does. Even though she does sort of look kind of uh, freaked out at the moment. The interesting thing about lorikeets is that they have specially adapted brush-tipped tongues for gathering nectar and pollen much easier. This is why the nectar in the cups goes by so fast, because they drink it like crazy. Here, you want my bird? No, I don't have any nectar. Oh. Well, maybe you'll still want a perch on you. Oh. Even though lorikeets are a lot of fun to chat around with, or in this case, chirp around with, they're not the only birds here that we can actually feed. We can also feed the very pink and very unique looking Rosetta Spoonbill. Let's go see how that's done. Now with the spoonbills, we don't feed them cups of nectar, but live mealworms by hand. And by alive, I mean alive and squirming around in your hand while they're eating them. So spoonbill feeding is definitely not for those who are squeamish of insects, especially holding them. But they also sift through the water to find microbial organisms and algae, so mealworms are not really the only thing that they like. But it is a preferred delicacy to them, and well, for me, it's just bugs crawling on my hand, which doesn't really feel all that pleasant at all. But alas, I could not take the squirminess anymore, so I had to dip my hand into the water for the spoonbills can get them just as easily as they would from my hand. And it also looks like the Demoiselle crane doesn't really mind at all. And yes, it is pronounced Demoiselle, not Demoisel. I pronounced it wrong back in part 5, sorry. It's meant to be said with a French undertone. Demoiselle. 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 Omelet du fromage. But anyway... Besides pronouncing French names, or looking at goofy spoonbills, or feeding really chirpy lorikeets, this violacious Taraco is just sitting here grooming himself. It is very interesting, but not as interesting as what the Demoiselle Cranes are about to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Dance of the Demoiselle Cranes. And now, a montage of what we did for the rest of the day. Don't tell me we're going on a carousel.
dance of the demoiselle cranes. Demoiselle cranes! <laughs>